Hi guys, Sport Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, you have seen how we do API integration using a normal thread. There were quite a number of steps, but in this particular video, we will be mainly concentrating in the third step, which is writing a working code to hit the backend with proper payload. This part contains few subparts like setting up the HTTP request, making the request call, reading the response and depending upon how the response has come back, it could be a successful response or a failure response. Now instead of using a thread, what we will be doing is we will be using a API called as OKHttp. If you try to find out what is OKHttp, you will come to know that it is a library by a firm called Square. It is a client for Android and Java applications for making RESTful API calls. And the main reason why you use this OKHttp OK is the efficiency it provides. It allows several requests to be made using a same shared socket. If something goes wrong, it can be configured to make retrial of the API calls. And if you want to use the OKHttp OK in your application, then the minimum requirement is it should be Android 2.3 and above and the JDK is minimum 1.7. So what are the APIs or the classes that we would be using as a part of OKHttp OK library? Well, we have something called as OKHttp OK client. This is a class which is a factory class that is used to make API calls. This is where you configure your caching strategy, read and connection timeouts. You can basically think of this as a component which makes the API call over the network. To actually make the request, you have to basically build request using a API called as request. It contains the HTTP request information. It contains all the URL, what kind of method you are executing, header information and the JSON payload that will go as part of the request. Once you make a request, Request, there will be a callback interface called as callback. This particular callback interface has got two methods which is on response and on failure. On response handles when response comes back successfully and on failure is triggered when you have some kind of exceptions. So whatever the APIs that we have seen so far, it basically replaces what we were doing with HTTP URL connection in the previous video. Now the question is what should I do about threads? Well, okay. HTTP also handles the multi-threading for you. However, still some thread management needs to be done by the developer. And what about the JSON parsing? Does it do the JSON parsing also automatically? Well, once again, we will have to do it as a developer. It is our responsibility to take care of the JSON parsing. I think we now know enough theory about how the OK HTTP would work like. It is better to get into a quick demo to understand how this works. Well, it is the same old code base. It contains runnable instance and we are calling it through the thread. This we won't be doing it. Instead of that, we will be using a OKHttp OK client. To use OKHttp OK client, you have to add that in your application. Well, that can be done by adding few more lines to our app build gradle file. So if you go to the build.gradle file, you will observe that I have added this one more line, which is implementation form square up OKHttp OK 3 version 3.10. This is the latest version that I am using. And to do the parsing, we will be using JSON library, which is Google's library for doing the JSON parsing. So if you use this unnecessarily writing this custom code to do the JSON parsing will not be necessary. So I have added this particular dependencies and I have synced my build gradle file. So let me create a OK HTTP client and then here where I was starting a thread earlier, I will initialize OK HTTP client. To create a OK HTTP client, I will use a builder that is OK HTTP client dot builder and to this particular builder, I will invoke some more methods like connection timeout and then read timeout and then I will invoke build. Well, you have to provide the arguments for the connection timeout and read timeout methods. The arguments are how many milliseconds of timeout you want to give and the time unit. So whatever the earlier code that we were doing that has been replaced with these set of lines. Now we have to set the request. Well, for that also we have an API called as request and once again we will be using request builder and to that we will set up the URL. So 
we have a method called as url whatever the earlier url that we were setting up we will use the same string value to set up the url and then the header value so i have a method called as add header here once again i will be writing content type and application json after adding the header section i will have to now give what kind of api request it is is it a get request post request put request so in OKHTTP, it is much simpler you have to just write post and the argument it takes is request body which is a json content well for that we have request body dot create the first argument is basically what kind of data type it is so i will have to tell that it is a application json data type that we are sending and then i will have to give the actual json as i told you i will be using json library to convert the author object into a json string so it would be new json dot to json and pass the object that you want to convert into a json string and then write build and finally we have to make the call for that you have to give ok http client dot new call the argument is the request and you have to enqueue this this will make sure that this particular logic will be actually offloaded from the ui thread to a non ui thread and the argument nq will take is a callback so i will create a anonymous inner class for callback you have to override two methods one is on failure and another one is on response since on failure will be running away from the ui thread if you want to come back to the main thread then you will have to use get activity run on main thread and you have to provide a runnable instance and in the runnable instance you have to hide the progress bar and if in case if at all you want to toast something you can do that as well so you can write e dot get message whatever the exception message that you might have got and then finally dot so the other option is you have to parse whatever the response that you have got from the request to do that i will have to set the author from the response so response will be having a body and i have to convert that into a string that will be containing a json string response this needs to be converted into author object for that once again i will be using json dot from json will convert this particular thing into json the first argument is the json string equivalent of the object and the class type in which it needs to be converted so that is author dot class but that is not sufficient i will have to send this particular author object to the registration listener registration listener is the interface through which i will be informing the main activity that registration succeeded but once again that needs to happen from the main thread so i will be writing get activity dot run on your thread new runnable instance if registration listener is not equal to null then registration listener dot on registration success whatever the response that you have got that you have to pass and then dismiss the dialog i have an error message here i think this needs to be converted into final and that's it you created the http client created the request passed that request as the argument to a new call using the ok http client and you gave it a callback interface as the argument to the nq method and you are both handling on failure and on response i will just put the breakpoints and run this in the debug mode so that you understand what exactly is happening so let me enter the value and click on the register button as you can see here the ok http client has been set up and then the request has been set up the request contains all the information like what is the method what is the body what is the url that needs to be hit everything and then it comes here where we are actually making a call and you can observe that we were able to successfully parse the author and we have caught hold of the response that we have got from the backend and that's it another small change that i have done in the code is if the application is being run in the debug mode i have added the default values to the username email id and password so that i don't have to enter them again and again just to make it a little bit more efficient so this is how the ok http will work for one particular screen if we need to make restful api call then we need to create an instance of ok http client and request and then go through the whole boilerplate 
code to make a successful call from an activity or a fragment. So from the demo, you might have observed that every time we want to make a API call, we will be forced to create a HTTP client and a request object and then make a call. So there are multiple instances of OK HTTP clients. This is not a very efficient way. The efficient mechanism would be we will be having multiple request instances and we will be routing all those requests through a single OK HTTP client so that no unnecessary extra resources will be utilized for making these API calls. But to do that, our current code is very immature. We will have to refactor our code so that this becomes much more streamlined and efficient. We will have a look at how to do it in the next video. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.